if you could travel back in time and meet your 12 year old self, what would you tell him? For me, I would probably go back in time and be like, hey, so you love Lord of the Rings. In a couple of years, in five to six years, you're gonna uh, find this new show and you're gonna think it's better than Lord of the Rings. You're gonna think it's way better. You're gonna think it's the greatest thing that ever lived. You're gonna watch every episode like six times a week. You're gonna read the books. You're gonna become obsessed with the lore and you're gonna be sitting there waiting, waiting for the next book to come out. And then slowly, as the seasons progress, you're gonna get more and more disheartened. You're gonna, you're gonna find yourself going, Oh, but, and then you're going to be defending the show. You're going to be uh, defending it when you shouldn't be defending it. And then it's going to get so bad, it's going to break your heart and you're never going to be the same ever again. So I would tell my 12 year old self, do not get into Game of Thrones. Maybe watch it casually, you know, like a casual fan, like you do most shows, but don't get into the lore. Don't read the books. The sixth one's never going to come out. It's still not out. It will never come out. And I would just tell him, just do something else. Maybe don't give up the guitar. Maybe go out and meet some girls so that, you know, you don't have a life where you think back on, you know, the last 10 years of your life like you were married to Game of Thrones and every time someone mentions it, they're like, yeah, remember Game of Thrones? Remember it was bad? Yes, I remember it was bad. Stop talking about my ex-wife. So, 12-year-old self, maybe don't get into Game of Thrones because then you wouldn't refer to a TV series as your ex-wife like a psychopath. And the only time you'd ever be able to wear all your Game of Thrones merch is when you're sitting alone at home because then you run into someone and they're like, oh, Game of Thrones. That kind of ended pretty badly. Yes, I remember that it ended badly. Stop reminding me of my... I need to stop referring to that show like my ex-wife. And then as 12 year old me is sitting there shaking, wondering why I never grew really tall and I have a beard now and I'm a complete psychopath, I just start there screaming at him and I'm like, I can't even listen to Ram and Jawadi's music anymore because it just reminds me of the heartbreak. The utter, utter heartbreak of how bad that show went and I just can't enjoy any single part of it anymore whatsoever. I can't even relive the good seasons. Every time I think about it, I just get so mad and angry and then I just realize I'm not even mad and angry. I'm just sad. I'm just sad and disappointed, like a disappointed parent who's like, I'm not really angry, I might seem angry, but really, I'm just disappointed. So The Adam Project. This is a new Netflix film, a new Ryan Reynolds film, and in this film, Ryan Reynolds, as always, plays himself, Ryan Reynolds, but also this time, we have little youngster actor, Walker Scabell, who also plays Ryan Reynolds, but just young Ryan Reynolds, and he does an amazing job at that kind of charmy, cocky, kind of annoying, arrogant, smarmy, just like pop culture referencing, quick mouth, just big mouth, boo, boo, boo. he's always talking, he's always doing a little quip, a little thing, it's just little mini Ryan Reynolds, and the first couple of lines of dialogue in this film are so accurate to Ryan Reynolds, I found it kind of like off-putting and like cringy, and I was just like, Oh, this kid has nailed everything about Ryan Reynolds, how every single film he plays the same character, he has the same quips and comical lines, he's, you know, pop culture savvy, and he's just very quick-witted and hilarious in that specific way that Ryan Reynolds is. And at first, it's like, it's too much. The kid's too much, I hate him, I want to punch him in the face. But then, you realise that's like, part of the story, and part of the plot, and this film even though it is just like a generic sci-fi time travel uh, adventure film, very generic, very cliche, very by the numbers for most of it, it actually has this like hidden heart and this hidden emotion in it and this just amazing kind of dynamic between having this older man who kind of regrets the way he was as a kid, kind of hanging out with that kid, seeing what he used to be like. And there are some incredibly powerful, incredibly well written and acted scenes of just heart and emotion and just of regret from the past and now in hindsight how you feel about it and wishing you could go back and in particular there's two or three scenes the standout is with the mum back in the olden days and old Ryan Reynolds who comes back to the past where he was a bit of a brat as a kid and he has this amazing scene where she doesn't know who he is but he's saying all the things he wish he could have said back then and it's real early on in the film and it just blew me away. And there's a couple of scenes throughout that in the movie that are just spectacular. This film has way more heart than you would ever imagine if you're like, okay, it's a time traveling Ryan Reynolds with little mini me Ryan Reynolds and they're doing Deadpool jokes like Ryan Reynolds does and there's sci-fi, you know? Like this film, for half of it, there's jokes where he's like, he gets shot and you know, when he coughs, uh, with the bullet in his chest does a, like a little fart and lots of cringy terrible jokes like that there's lots of jokes about how his laser sword thing that is essentially a lightsaber but does more kind of shock damage explosion things it, it they're just like it's a lightsaber and he's like it's not lightsaber then he's like Pshh! and he may as well sing like the star wars theme as he does it like it's a bit kind of cringy like that 
But these little moments of heart and character development are so good. Ryan Reynolds does some exceptional acting in this movie, better than in Deadpool for like the heart and the emotion. The quips and the jokes don't really land for me that much. Some of them are pretty fun, but overall just a bit like really hit and miss. The action is... Ah. But honestly, there were moments in the film like towards the end where there was action and fighting and stuff going on and I was like... Get to a scene with him and his dad talking. I want to hear them talk again. I want to feel emotion and sorrow and heartbreak and longing and regret and all these things the show was just doing so well. But maybe that's just because I expected nothing. And the film starts off with little mini me, Ryan Reynolds, being like, I'm Ryan Reynolds. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Pop culture reference. Ba -ba Rude crude thingy. Butt joke or whatever, you know. So my expectations were like, oh, okay. Am I even going to finish this? But I did, and I ended up really, really liking it. Some parts were like quite surprisingly heartfelt and just amazing. So yeah, overall, I really, really enjoyed this film. Even though some of it is a bit like, uh... I do love a good time travel movie. I love the idea of going back to see your past self and interacting and all these things, seeing people that are like different and all these kind of things. There is a couple of characters that are like the same, but like de-aged atrocious looks horrendous some of the worst stuff i've ever seen but the rest of the visual effects some of them are really really great some of them are really cool and interesting like the time warping spaceship kind of stuff it's really really fun but a lot of it it's like really amazing and epic but kind of we've just gone to that point where it's like a marvel movie we like that is technically very impressive but it didn't wow me like it's not like a dune or something like that where you're just kind of like wow how did they make it feel like that this is just kind of like, yeah, another generic sci-fi action movie. But, you know, it appeared on Netflix on the weekend. I chucked it on a Saturday. I watched it. I had, like, a fun time. It's not going to blow your mind. And if you hate Ryan Reynolds and kind of that shtick he does, like he just plays Ryan Reynolds, you're going to hate this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to kill you. You're going to really want it to stop. But I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not over his shtick yet, even though I don't even love the Deadpool movies or many of his films. Like, Free Guy was fine. It was better than I thought it would be. But I guess with all his films, I just have this low expectation. Like, I watched Red Notice, and everyone's like, it's the worst film that's ever been made. Cinema is dead. And I watched it, and I'm like, nah, I don't know. That's fine. Like, what do you want? Like, I was super hungover. Then when it finished, I was slightly less hungover, and my food was almost at my door. Like, it was... Like, what else do you want? Like, I don't know, him and The Rock are very similar. They essentially just play, like, the same character. The Rock's just The Rock. Ron Reynolds is just Ron Reynolds. But for me, I'm not over it yet. Uh, they're just charming enough. Also, this film makes a really good point uh, of just having them both be the same. That, uh, you know, little kid, oh, you're like, oh, shut up, little kid. And Ron Reynolds is even like, oh, shut up, stop doing the quips that I do. And you're like, yeah, little kid, it's, like, got cuteness. But having a sexy, charming, charismatic Ron Reynolds say those lines... You're just less like you want to punch him in the face. So his charisma, you realize it does bring a lot, uh, even though he is doing like the one note uh, that he always brings, but with that extra level of heart, which I think just makes this movie totally worth watching. Everything else about it is like, yeah, it's fine. Uh, Mark Ruffalo's in it. He's fine. I mean, he's good. There's some good scenes, but I was surprised by how good Ryan Reynolds was in all those you know, heartfelt emotional scenes with all the time travel involved and all the timey wimey nonsense jibbity jew that they're talking about it all kind of is in service of having these great emotional moments about like you know looking back at the past and regrets and wants and what you know, all that kind of stuff it's just really really good and there's a moment at the end that involves a hug and it's just like so beautiful like honestly so beautiful but maybe it's just because i expected literally nothing like there's a moment right at the end uh, which is just so cliche and so cheesy and then when it ends i'm just like oh i'm devastated that's so powerful how did this film do this once again, probably because my expectations were, like, on the ground. So, it only could go upwards. But maybe I'm selling the film short. I had a surprisingly fun time. Uh, but yeah, give it a, it's, a, it's a one thumb up. Maybe not a two, not a masterpiece by any stretch. But, bloody, go check it out. I highly recommend it. Uh, I think, now I'm finished, this is kind of a non-spoiler one. Uh, I don't really have anything to say with spoilers. It's all, you know... It's good, it's good times. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment below. I'd love to know what people think, having seen the movie. Are you like, big thumbs up as well? Or you're like, no, Ryan Reynolds, stop making the same movie.